Welcome to the NEMB webinar on documentation. The purpose of this webinar is to highlight elements of the standards for documentation and to demonstrate how they apply to nursing practice. The webinar will be approximately 20 minutes in length. NEMB has broad standards of practice for registered nurses and nurse practitioners. And in addition, three specific standard documents to further expand on the topics of documentation, medication management, and the nurse-client relationship. This webinar is specific to the standards for documentation. At some point, we've all likely felt that documentation was taken away from patient care. Today, I'm going to talk about why documentation is a crucial aspect in nursing care and not just an additional task. Indicator 2.9 from the NAMB Standards of Practice for Registered Nurses states that the RN maintains timely and accurate documentation. The standards for documentation further describe your accountabilities related to this indicator. In today's presentation, we will focus on what documentation means and why we do it. We will look at NAMB's documentation standards and how they apply to your nursing practice. And we'll finish by sharing a couple of valuable resources. Why document? Documentation is an element that contributes to patient care. Documentation is required by every RN and NP in every practice setting. To put it simply, documentation is not optional. Let's consider the positive impacts of documentation. Documentation demonstrates that nurses have applied nursing knowledge, skill and judgment, acted on this knowledge, and evaluated the outcomes. Hence, documentation demonstrates accountability to the client, the employer, and to the profession of nursing. Documentation communicates with other care providers and promotes continuity of care, including the creation and modification of care plans. Documentation creates data and medical records that may be used in approved health research or quality improvement projects. Finally, documentation can be used as evidence in legal proceedings. For example, when NAB receives an official complaint regarding a member and that RN or NP is being investigated, documentation is a key piece of evidence for the complaints committee and the lawyers involved. In essence, documentation needs to be well done. Now let's consider each standard statement in the standards for documentation. The first standard is communication and states, nurses document accurate, pertinent and comprehensive information concerning the condition of the client, the client's needs, the nursing interventions, and the client health outcomes. The most important purpose of documentation is to communicate client health information. Communicating the client's health information to another member of the healthcare team enables consistency and continuity in client care. Documentation communicates to the team your assessment, planning, implementation, and evaluation of the care provided. Documentation also serves to communicate any preferences or expressed needs of the client. Documentation should include both objective and subjective data. Objective data is data that can be observed, such as the client was crying, or data that can be measured, such as vital signs. The term objectivity means documenting facts without distortion of the data. For example, a nurse's opinion should not be documented. Subjective data includes statements and feedback from a client. For example, you may document the objective fact that the client's temperature is 38 degrees Celsius. And you may add subjective information that the client reports, I'm feeling warm and dizzy. When information about a client's health is obtained from a third party, for example, a family member, nurses should use clinical judgment to decide if the information is relevant to the client's current status and likely to have an impact on the client's care. If the answer is yes, then that information should be documented as objectively as possible. Another aspect of communication is the inclusion of a clearly identifiable signature and designation on all documents. 
Nurses must provide a full signature and professional designation like RN, GN, NP, or GMP with all documentation. The use of initials is acceptable when a master list of full signatures and initials are incorporated into the documentation tool being used. Nurses are expected to follow, follow employer policy regarding documentation practices, including signature and designation. Don't forget to document the nursing care provided when using virtual and telecommunication technologies. For example, when providing telephone advice or when using a virtual platform to provide nursing services. Any of these standards apply to all nurses in all practice settings, including telecommunications or virtual care. There is research to show that errors in client care have been directly related to the use of abbreviations. Indicator 1.10 in the Standards for Documentation state that nurses only use abbreviations and symbols when each has a distinct interpretation and has been approved by your employer. From a safety perspective, it's best to avoid using abbreviations. For example, a capital IU is meant to represent international units, but could be mistaken for IV. In this example, the Institute for Safe Medication Practices, or the ISNP, suggests writing the word unit. For more information on safe use of abbreviation, visit ISMP's website. The second documentation standard is accountability and liability. Accountability means being responsible for your actions and the consequences of your actions. Documentation demonstrates a nurse's responsibility and determines whether the nurse has been accountable to their clients and their employer. It answers the question, who did what, when? Nurses are accountable for recording information in a timely manner. You should document information during care or as soon as possible after the care has been provided. This enhances the accuracy of each entry and the overall credibility of the record. Unless it is an emergency situation, such as a code, you should only document what you have done. Regardless of time constraints, it's important that you never document care before it's been given. For example, you should not complete a flow sheet about care you're going to provide until after the care has been provided, no matter how predictable you think the outcome is likely to be. When you document, include the date and time of the documentation, as well as the date and the time the care was provided. Documentation should follow chronological order. Remember to refer to workplace policies regarding documentation. When correcting an error, a nurse is required to ensure that the original content of the documentation is maintained. The correction and the content that was changed should be identified and the entry must be signed. Standard Indicator 2.6 states that RNs correct mistaken entries while ensuring that the original information remains visible and retrievable. For example, if you record an incorrect date, it should remain visible as documented even after you add the correct date in the record. On the slide, we show a single red line marking out the incorrect information with initials. Employers should have, a po have policies on how to correct mistaken entries. Things like liquid paper should never be used because the original content has to remain visible. For electronic documentation, the same concepts apply. You should not delete information that has already been documented and saved. When working with an electronic documentation system, you are responsible to know how to correct a mistaken entry. As stated in Indicator 2.7, you should never delete, alter, or modify another individual's documentation. The third documentation standard states, nurses safeguard client health information by maintaining confidentiality and acting in accordance with the information retention and destruction policies and procedures that are consistent with professional and ethical standards, relevant legislation, and the employer policies. NAMB chose the word security for the third documentation standard because security refers to access, sharing, storage, retrieval, and transmission of client information. It is more than confidentiality. 
When clients entrust their personal information to a healthcare professional, it is essential that the confidentiality of that information be safeguarded and only shared as necessary in serving the client's best interests. Nurses are responsible for the privacy and security of their client's personal information. We will explore some indicators from Documentation Standard 3 Security, which will clarify this concept. NEAB requires RNs and NPs to be familiar with and follow employer policies and New Brunswick's Personal Health Information Privacy Access Act, or PIPA. PIPA provides a set of rules that protects privacy and confidentiality of personal health information. PIPA also ensures that information is available as needed, as well as being available to monitor, evaluate, and improve health systems in New Brunswick. To whom does PIPA apply? In short, PIPA applies to you. PIPA applies generally to a group of stakeholders throughout the healthcare system and government who are referred to as custodians. So what is a custodian? PIPA defines custodian as an individual or organization that collects, maintains, or uses personal health information for providing or assisting in the provision of health care or treatment or the planning and management of health care systems or delivering a government program or service. That is a broad statement that includes every RN and NP. Nurses are well aware of the need to maintain privacy and confidentiality of written documentation, but I want to take this time to remind you of the importance of keeping your passwords and any devices containing client information secure. For example, never share your sign-in password and always sign off a device. If you carry a laptop or USB key with client information, there needs to be safety measures in place in the event these items are lost or stolen. For example, the information should be encrypted and whenever possible, all personal identifiers should be removed. The last aspect of security that I'm going to touch on is the proper destruction of documents. In New Brunswick, employers determine the retention period for documents. Common practice for self-employed healthcare professionals is to retain records for at least seven years after the client relationship ends. NAMB does not determine how long records should be kept. It's also important to discuss the issue of temporary records. If you're using temporary hard copy documents, such as a shift report or communication books, you must ensure that any relevant information is transferred to the permanent record as soon as possible. And once the temporary documents are no longer necessary, it's essential that confidentiality is maintained in the, in the process of disposing them. Similarly, similarly, if you're self-employed and retain non-active client records, don't forget to dispose of these securely. Although NEMB does not provide legal advice, it is important to think about your professional responsibilities in relation to the legal aspect of documentation. All RNs and NPs in New Brunswick have liability protection through CMPS, the Canadian Nurses Protective Society. CMPS has valuable information on the legal implications of charting. For example, they have a document titled Quality Documentation, Your Best Defense, which has content on the purpose of documentation, legal implications of charting, how much documentation is enough, and risk management considerations. CMPS also provides webinars and confidential consultation services. These services can be accessed by phone or through their webpage. NEMB encourages members to visit CMPS for evidence-informed resources. NEMB does receive a lot of questions regarding documentation. To accompany the standards for documentation and to support members, we also have an FAQ on documentation that can be found on the NAMB webpage. If you have any questions related to the application of your standards of practice or any other questions related to your practice, please contact NAMB. We can be contacted by email 
or by phone. Thank you.